when I'm not busy constructing the infinity lanyard that will someday stretch all the way from winter to summer Nam. I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. <laughs> Looks like everyone is just doing something else. Is this a venue where live music is more like background music? Yeah, so one of the more recent gig vlogs, you may have noticed not a lot of people are paying attention because it's kind of like at this, this rooftop bar restaurant thing. And uh, as the musicians there, we're just really kind of there to provide like an atmosphere. And it's not like an active listening thing. But I kind of want to talk about that for a second because I know a lot of musicians who kind of make the circuit and they get very insulted, like if people aren't paying attention. And uh, it's kind of a bummer for them because they're just kind of let down. And I think that's just kind of like a total mindset thing because you got to understand that. Like if people are going out to dinner or something, they might not even expect music to be there. So I think it's kind of wrong to expect them to pay attention when they didn't even know what they were getting into. Like it's one thing if they're coming to go see a show that maybe, you know, you, you advertise and they're coming there to see you, then it might be like a little bit, you know, rude or disrespectful for them, for them to be like talking in the audience or something like that. But again, it, you're kind of normal restaurant, uh, live music venue thing. I never ever take offense if people are not listening. In fact, I kind of enjoy it because I can just do really whatever the heck I want. Uh, you can always try to get people more engaged because again, at the end of the day, a lot of times tips are gonna be how, the, the money you make from tips might actually be more than the money that the venue is paying you. So, you know, there are certain things you can do to kind of get people's attention to get them more involved in the show, which is something that is totally cool. I think my, my banter is definitely aimed at getting some people's attention, but I've also seen, I've also been to shows where maybe the performer gets a little salty about people not clapping and stuff. And it's like, man, come on. like. These people are just out to dinner. It's not like they bought a ticket to come see you. So I think that's just like two totally different, you know, schools of thought. I can see it from both sides, but again, if they're not there to see you specifically, really just kind of enjoy the process of being background music and this use as an opportunity to really just get paid to practice, which is kind of how, how I see it a lot of the time. And again, that just kind of brings another question, like why is somebody getting into music in the first place? Are, are you doing it because you like it or are you doing it because you want to get attention from people? And I think really, you know, the more authentic and genuine you are with your relationship to music, really, I, I think the, the better it comes off in a live setting anyways. So that's just something I kind of want to touch base on because in some of the gig vlogs, you can tell that like people are just walking by and it's fine. I never, ever would be insulted by someone not paying attention to these acoustic covers that I do at a lot of the venues I play. This is what happens when white people grab hold of a good funk tune. Seriously though, this is trash. The funky vibe was what made it good. The funky vibe in the original song I meant made it good. Some of my favorite salty comments are the ones where they respond to their own comment to make it even saltier or just to clarify something that may have been interpreted as a positive reinforcement just to make sure you know exactly what they meant. Why does every American claim he's Irish plus Ed Sheeran is English? So this is in response to a kind of joke I made in one of the videos about people requesting I play Ed Sheeran live because I'm Irish. And is Ed Sheeran really not Irish? Because he seems totally Irish. <laughs> but I think this is a very American thing where if you don't have an ethnicity in your family other than just being American, you, I kind of feel like you're forced to say something that is not American. Like I don't have anybody in my family going back generations that wasn't born in America, but I, I remember getting the, the question as a kid like, well, well, what ethnicity are you? I'm just like American. And it's like, no, like what, uh, I'm like Irish. And then you have this like chart. I remember I was like, I, I really thought about this question. Like, where do I come from as a child? And there's like a small, small percentage of like native American, like Cherokee Indian or something. And again, I remember in school, I was supposed to tell people that. And I'm like, I don't really identify with Native Americans that much. And they're like, oh, you should be proud of your heritage. And I don't know if that's just an American thing where you're supposed to go back millennia <laughs> to tell people where you come from. But I guess it's Irish if I'm in America. 
somehow Irish people on the internet take offense that I identify with being Irish. But I'm sorry, I don't know how to please everybody, okay? If someone held a gun to your head and you had to choose between a PRS Silver Sky and a chorus pedal, what would your last words be? So it's possible that I'm actually Scottish, because in this scenario, I see myself yelling freedom at the top of my lungs, William Wallace style, as I'm disemboweled. What are your favorite animes? You know, I never really got into anime, with the exception of I had a Dragon Ball Z phase in high school, like pretty much everybody did. And I was like, this is pretty cool. And then it just got to the point where I would come home from school and for a half an hour, I would just be watching jacked cartoons power themselves up and not do anything. And I think it was probably 20 episodes in a row where they just kept powering up where I was like, I really need to get a hobby. <laughs> and I think it was about that time that I started playing guitar. So thank you, Dragon Ball Z, for all that you've given me. Is it bad to never use a pick because I end up never using a pick? I mean, I have them, but I despise them all. Definitely nothing bad about not using a pick. In fact, I probably didn't use a pick for the first like year and a half, two years that I played. Uh, anything that you can play, you know, with a pick, with the exception of some speed stuff. And even then, like a lot of the speed kind of, you know, alternate picking stuff you can manage to do with just uh, your nails, stuff like that. I do personally think that the attack of a pick is something that you should have in your repertoire just because it provides a different sound, especially when you're playing with, you know, maybe other musicians. Having that, that harder pick attack will kind of break through the mix a little bit more. But again, it's not totally necessary. Some of the best players of all time play without using picks. And there are advantages to not using a pick because you can kind of break up, you know, the chords and stuff like that with some finger style finger style madness. So again, I, I would almost recommend starting without using a pick because I think you develop a little bit stronger of a relationship uh, between biologically between like your hand and the actual instrument and then to kind of start working a pick in because again, it's going to be something that you're happy that you're able to do even though it can be frustrating at first. Hi Sean, are you familiar with Strandberg guitars? They're one of the headstock free variety. Thoughts on no headstock guitars? So I totally get it. These guitars play exceptionally well. I've only played them a few times, but there is just something inherently weird about playing them if you're not an experienced headstockless guitar player. Also, when it comes to any kind of maintenance, I try to keep things as low maintenance as possible. So having to clip something else off the top of the headstock to like restring a guitar is something that I'm just kind of like opposed inherently. So. You know, I, I know those guitars are awesome. I've played them a few times, especially the ones with like, uh, a lot of them have uh, fan frets and they play great. I get it, but I just think I'm kind of a purist, I suppose, with the headstock. So it's not something that I'm totally willing to go to right now. It just kind of looks strange to me. No hate, but it is a little weird. So for listening homework this week, I'm going to throw you to the new St. Vincent album where she took her last album and then just basically did it as a stripped down acoustic uh, piano album, which I thought was really cool because I think she's like really an exceptional songwriter who takes a lot of risks in her production. So even though I liked the last album and kind of like the production behind it, I think that listening to the acoustic piano versions really give you a sense of what a great songwriter she is. And for me personally, they kind of opened up a whole new just idea of what a lot of the songs were about. So check that out. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and we'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks a lot.